namin Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na aming gagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasala. Amen. Good morning, Valenzuelanos. Are you ready to learn and relearn? Once again, I am your teacher for today, Sir Proceso B. Binsol III of the Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction for Quarter 2, Week 4, entitled Recognize Elements of the Fire Triangle in Different Situations. For your attendance, kindly comment your name and school where you came from at the comment section below. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to recognize elements of the fire triangle in different situations. Analyze the different causes of fires. Observe precautionary measures and proper procedures in addressing a fire incident. Before we proceed to our lesson, here are some important reminders. Prefer your learning materials. Listen carefully to the lesson presentation of the teacher. And participate in the class discussion. To start our lesson, we will have a simple activity entitled, Unscramble the Jumble Letter Words. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. As you can see, there are jumble lettered words above each image. Unscramble the jumble lettered words to reveal the words associated to the lesson. You are given five seconds to write your answer on the comment box. For the first word, yes, it's fire. Good job. Now, for the number two word. You're correct. It's fire hazard. Amazing. Then, for the number three word. Yes, it's oxygen. Bravo. And for the number four word. Yes, it's fuel. Fantastic. Now, are the words decoded related to the discussion? Yes, we have fire, fire hazard, oxygen, and fuel. So these are the keywords that we are going to encounter for today in our lesson. Now, let us go on with our lesson for today. Let us first define what is fire. Fire is the rapid oxidation of a material in the exothermal chemical process of combustion, releasing heat, light, and various reaction products. Another definition of fire. Fire is composed of three elements. These are heat, fuel, and oxygen, which when combined will result in a chemical reaction, which is called burning. Now, we have the diagram illustration here of a fire triangle, which are composed 
of the three elements. These are oxygen source, in which normal air contains 21% oxygen. Fuel may also contain oxygen. Then, number two, heat sources. These are the sun, hot surfaces, sparks, friction, electrical energy, and others. And number three is the fuel sources. Fuel sources can be a solid, liquid, or gas. Here are some examples. Solids, for example, are coal, wood, paper, leather, plastic, sugar, and grains. Examples of liquids are gasoline, alcohol, paints, olive oil, and others. Gases. These are natural gas like, for example, propane, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane. Now, let us go on to the triangle of fire. Number one component is the fuel. Fuel, in order for a fire to start, there must be a material to burn. And this is referred to as the fuel. Fuel is any kind of combustible material, including paper, oils, wood, gases, fabrics, liquids, plastics, and rubber. The fuel for a fire is usually characterized by its moisture content, size, shape, and quantity. And this will determine how easily the fuel will burn and at what temperature. Now, we have here a picture. Here is an example image of fuel. Number two component is heat. In addition to a fuel source, heat must be present in order for ignition to take place. All flammable materials give up flammable vapors, which when heat is presently consumed by fire. Heat is also responsible for the spread and maintenance of fire as it removes the moisture from nearby fuel, warming the surrounding area and preheating fuel in its path, enabling it to travel and develop with greater ease. Number three component is oxygen. As well as fuel and heat, fires also need oxygen to stay on fire. Ambient air is made up approximately of 21% of oxygen, and as most fires only require at least 16% of oxygen for it to burn. It acts as the oxidizing agent in the chemical reaction. This means that when the fuel burns, it reacts with the oxygen to release heat and generate combustion. Now, here is a diagram illustration of how fire takes oxygen from the air. In picture number one, or illustration number one, flame burns oxygen in the air. Then, in picture number two, heated gases expand. Then, the flame uses oxygen and heats up other gases. Then, in picture and illustration number three, partial vacuum forces rubber down. Flame uses up all of oxygen and is extinguished. Now, we have mentioned extinguish. Now, let us go on to the extinction of the fire. How is the fire being subdued? 
to stop a fire, one of the three elements of the fire triangle must be removed. So, if a fire runs out of fuel, it will smolder out. If you can cool a fire down, it will lose heat and go out. And if the oxygen is removed, it will suffocate. Therefore, attempts at com combating fire and also preventing a fire are based upon these principles. Fire blankets, for example, suppress fire and remove the oxygen. As a result, putting it out. Similarly, fire extinguishers are developed to eliminate one of the three elements, such as water, fire, extinguishers, which cool the fire down and remove any heat. Now, here is an image showing extinction of fire or fire suppression. As you can see, the firemen are spraying a fire extinguisher to the burning or flaming vehicle. Now, let us go on to fire hazard. It's the common hazard which is present in all areas of light. Most combustible materials are stored in a normal atmosphere which contains oxygen. And so the risk of fire is then due to the possibility of an ignition source. Combustible liquids can vaporize and so form oxygen, air mixture at their surface that can be ignited. The temperature at which a liquid fuel vapor can ignite is called its flash point. The heat needed for combustion to take place depends on the flash point if it is a liquid. Solids need a much higher temperature to ignite. Now, let us go on to the different causes of fire. Fire incidents are commonly due to human error and negligence. This is the primary cause. Here are some reported incidents that show how destructive fire is. Number one. Majority of fire incidents occur in family dwellings and mostly caused by electrical short circuits and connections. In the first quarter of 2013, 23% of fire incidents are of this nature. Now, it is represented in the picture or image below. As you can see, there is an octopus wiring in the extension causing it to short circuit. Next, number two. Unattended cooking. It is among the most frequent cause of fire. It climbed up to 533 fires in 2012, destroying hard-earned investments and properties. As you can see in the picture below. Number 3. In 2012, open flames due to unattended torch or gasera and lighted candles caused 455 fire accidents, destroying several homes all over the country, as you can see in the images below. Next, number four, LPG explosions due to poorly maintained tanks and hoses also caused 98 fire accidents in the homes in the year of 2012 as what we can see in the image below next number five lighted cigarette butts cost 271 fire incidents in the first quarter of 2013 as what we can see in the image below in this image it causes forest fires next number six lighted matches and lighters consume several homes resulting to two to 124 fires incidents in the first quarter of 2013 so when we are using these kinds of materials we must 
observe precautionary measures. Now, there are five fire classes. Number one, class A, light materials. Number two, class B, flammable. Number three, class C, energized electrical equipment. Number four, class D, combustible materials. And number five, class K, cooking fuels and oils. Now, let us have number one, class A, light materials. Fuels are ordinary combustibles such as wood, paper, plastic, or anything that leaves ash, as you can see in the image below. Next, number two, class B, flammable. Fuels are flammable or combustible liquids like petroleum, oil, gasoline, paint, and flammable gases such as propane and butane. Cooking oils and grease are not part of Class B fires. Next, number three, Class C, Energized Electrical Equipment. Fuels are energized electrical fires like motors, transformers, and appliances. It includes all electrical appliances. Once the power or source of electricity is removed, the fire becomes one of the other classes of fire. Next, number four, class D, combustible materials. Fuels are combustible ma metals like potassium, sodium, aluminum, titanium, and magnesium. These are shown in the images below. Now, let us go on with the last class, last but not the least, of course, class K, which is number 5. These are cooking fuels and oils. Fuels are cooking oils, grease, such as animal fat and vegetable fats. The fire triangle or combustion triangle is a simple model for understanding the necessary ingredients for most fires. Now, let us go on to the preparedness and mitigation. These are the what to do before or in case a fire breaks out. Develop a school preparedness plan. Next, Develop building evacuation plans for each building. Then, post evacuation plans in strategic locations. After that, install fire extinguishers and alarms. Next, educate by means of demonstration to teachers and students on the proper use of fire extinguishers. Maintain proper signage of fire exits. Next, clear and free fire exits from obstruction. This is important if in case the actual fire incident broke up. Next, ensure the building. When we say ensure the building, we should secure the necessary materials, for example, the documents and the other files. Then next, check regularly on the security guards and watchmen. Next, make sure that the public addresses systems are loud, clear, and functional. We should inspect the alarms and, of course, the other sound equipment that we are using. For example, the megaphones also. 
Then next, assist the professional firemen in their fire prevention and suppression drill program. Fire brigade members should be included. Next, conduct regular inspections and safety checks on electrical outlets. Another one, assign personnel who will regularly check possible areas where fire may start, such as stock room, laboratories, and kitchens. Next, maintain a fire safety plan and an education program to preserve the school to protect the students from fire. Consider escape ladders for multi-story school buildings. So these are the things that we should remember before a fire incident happens. Now, next, let us go on to the response. What to do during a fire incident? This is when the fire is breaking out. When fire is detected, these are the do's. Number one, sound the alarm. Number two, advise the fire department. Number three, fight the fire with available equipment for kiddie or junior fire marshals and trained personnel. Number four, Drop the fire extinguisher if you are using it and leave it if the fire does not immediately die down. Next, seek the nearest exit not blocked by fire. This is important in order for us to evacuate the premises immediately. Number six, fill the door, cracks, and doorknob with the back of your hand before opening the door if you are escaping through a closed door. The back of your hand is more sensitive to heat. Next, number seven, close windows and doors as you escape from the fire scene to delay the spread of the fire. Number eight, use your second way out. If you see smoke or fire in your first escape route, the less time you are exposed to poisonous gases or flames, the safer you will be. Okay, next. Get out as safely as quickly as you can and stay away from toxic smoke and gases. We should observe the basic drill. Drop, crawl, and go when fire breaks out. Number 10, crawl low under the smoke to your exit. If you must exit through smoke, crawling with your head at a level of one to two feet above the ground will temporarily provide the best air. Number 11, once you are outside, Go to your safe meeting place and send one person to call the fire department if not already alerted. And last but not the least, number 12, once you are out, stay out. Meaning, do not go back inside the burning premises or buildings. Next. Let us now go on to the don'ts. These are the things that we shouldn't do if a fire is already breaking out. Number one, do not panic for us to have or maintain a presence of mind and also be alerted on the things that we are going to do or the steps that we are going to undertake next. Number two, do not run. Number three, do not use the elevators in order for you to avoid being trapped there. And number four, do not jump out from an upper floor. Now, let us go on to post-impact. This is when after the fire incident has happened. Number one, 
Conduct inventory of school personnel and students. Number two, seek medical assistance for the injured. For us to treat their injuries. And number three, do not return inside the school once outside. Next, we have here the picture of the rehabilitation phase. This is the things that we should do or what to do after the fire incident. Now, let us go on to the next. Coordinate with the Bureau of Fire Protection and Municipal or City Engineering Office for Building Assessment. Next, conduct inventory of school personnel and students' equipment, fixtures, and facilities. Report damage or damages to proper authorities. Next, give first aid when needed and seek medical assistance for the seriously injured. Another one, stay out of fire damaged buildings until local fire authorities say it is safe to re-enter the premises. Then, report any survivors. So those are the things that we should do after the fire. Now, to summarize and recap our lesson for today and what we have discussed, we have defined what is fire. Fire is the rapid oxidation of a material in the exothermal chemical process of combustion, releasing heat, light, and various reaction products. Then, we have also discussed fire triangle. Our triangle is an illustration to help us understand the three important elements needed to start and sustain fire. Right amount of these elements will let fire occur naturally. Next, we have discussed the first ingredient of the triangle which is fuel. Fuel is any material that can be burned such as solid, liquid, or gas. Combustion takes place when fuel is converted into a gaseous state as moisture is removed. Then, number two component, heat, is an energy that flows through object. Enough amount of heat would free the vapor from the solid and liquid forms of fuel. Next, the number three component is the oxygen. Oxygen is an element which is estimated at about 21% which can be found in the air. During combustion process, chemical reaction takes place. Oxygen is relieved, released and serves as an oxidizing agent for combustible materials. Now, that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you for attending. Stay safe, everyone, and God bless. Good morning.